Good morning, Heaven Band family and anyone listening. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word on this Saturday morning. And uh, hope that you have a nice weekend planned. Um, if chapter 24 of Genesis is my favorite chapter, 25, uh, 27, 28 has to be uh, possibly the saddest chapters, uh, unless uh, later we get down to around 38, where Joseph is sold into captivity by his brethren. Here in chapter 25, Esau and Jacob are born. And um, we, we might start out chapter 25. Uh, um, Abraham will remarry uh, at 100 years old. He will remarry, well, actually, at more than 100 years old. He would be about 137 now. And he marries Keturah and will have six children by them. And um, will, uh, in his old age, bless them, give them gifts, and send them away. And uh, then um, uh, we have the generation, uh, we have uh, Abraham's death at 175. Isaac, at age 40, will marry Rebekah. And um, um, Ishmael. Well, God will fulfill his promise to Abraham. He promised Abraham that he would uh, make Ishmael the father of 12 nations. And he does. And we have the names of the of his Esau's son or Ishmael's sons uh, and uh, their cities. In fact, that they will make be 12 princes. So, and um, then we have the sad story of Jacob and Esau. Twin boys born um, to Rebecca after her and Isaac have been married 20 years. And um, Esau will be the firstborn. Uh, when Rebecca uh, has been barren for some 20 years, uh, Isaac will pray for her and will intrigue in her behalf, and God will give her sons. And uh, in her uh, uh, pregnancy, there, carrying the two sons, she will. Uh, no doubt being misery will go to God in prayer and God promises her that he's going to give her two nations and that the younger Jacob is going to serve the elder Esau. It is this uh, promise that God makes to Rebekah that perhaps uh, provoked Rebekah to do what she did as far as deceiving Isaac um, and um, getting Jacob the blessing uh, uh, but nonetheless, it was deception. I said um, that 25, 27, 28 are the saddest chapters of Genesis. Um, uh, it is a, it is three chapters of deception. Uh, we have here, first of all, the uh, we have the curse of um, uh, parental favoritism. Uh, how sad it is when a father and mother will choose between their children and one will favor the one, the other will favor the other. It always creates strife between the brothers and sisters or the children. And uh, so how sad it was that uh, Isaac, though blessed by God and in favor with God, nonetheless was foolish uh, as far as his relationship to his two boys. Uh, as was Rebekah, the Bible says that uh, Esau loved Jacob, Isaac loved Esau, and Rebekah loved Jacob. Uh, it should have been Isaac and Rebekah loved Esau and Jacob. Uh, it is always wrong for a parent to show favoritism uh, because it does create strife between um, the one favorite and those that are not. Uh, and um, uh, here in this uh, chapter 25, 27, we have the, the curse of deception. Uh, first of all, Esau will deceive himself. Uh, uh, he goes out hunting, he comes in, he's hungry. Jacob has fixed a bowl of stew, and uh, he wants Jacob to give him part of his uh, uh, pottage there. Jacob makes a deal with Esau. I'll give you a bowl of stew. You give me your birthright. Uh, how foolish of Esau. 
he was deceived by his stomach, by his flesh, into thinking that he would surely die if he didn't get something to eat, uh, which is nonsense. Uh, but then Esau isn't the first or the last to be deceived by the gratification uh, in wanting to gratify the flesh. Um, Esau will say, what good is the birthright to me if I starve to death? Uh, and so he will make a deal with Jacob. And so Jacob is not wrong in feeling that he has a right to the birthright to the blessings of his father. After all, he and Esau made a deal. A deal's a deal. Uh, it was the deception in which uh, it all came about. Esau is deceived by his own appetite. Uh, Rebekah will deceive Isaac uh, along with the assistance of Jacob. Rebekah and Jacob will deceive Isaac. Uh, and trick him into making uh, Isaac think that Jacob is Esau and causing uh, Isaac to bless Esau instead of Jacob. Uh, and um, then we have, uh, as we go on through the chapters there, we have the, the, the curse of deception. Uh, um, Esau is cursed in that he loses his birthright. Rebecca is cursed in the sense that um, she will lose Jacob because when she hears that Esau is threatened to kill him, uh, she will send him, make a deal with Isaac, again deceiving Isaac, um, making Isaac believe that uh, if Jacob marries uh, one of the children of Heb, that she will uh, be outcast. Uh, that he needs to go back to their homeland. And like uh, like Isaac, who sent, uh, like Abraham, who sent Eliezer to get uh, Rebekah for Isaac, um, Isaac should send uh, uh, Jacob back to uh, the homeland to get a wife. And so uh, Abraham will agree. And Esau, Isaac, or Jacob, is sent back to Syria, there to Haran where he will marry the daughter, uh, be his first cousin, actually, the daughter of uh, Laman, um, his mother's brother. In doing so, uh, Rebecca will never see her favorite son again. She sends him down thinking that Isaac will get over his anger. She will send for Jacob and bring him back. However, uh, um, while Esau gets over his anger, Jacob winds up 20 years in Syria. And by the time he comes back, Rebekah is already dead. Uh, so she lost uh, the opportunity to spend the years with her favorite son. She missed out on the 12 grandchildren, actually the 13 grandchildren that Jacob will have. And, uh, and then... Jacob and Esau both are cursed in the sense that Esau will hate Jacob and threaten to kill him. And uh, uh, Jacob will leave uh, losing the love of a brother, losing the opportunity to grow up with a brother, and will live in fear of that brother uh, 20 years later when he gets ready to come back to the homeland. Shakespeare is quoted as saying, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Certainly, Rebecca and Jacob um, weaved a tangled web, and the whole uh, clan suffered as a result of it. Isaac missed out on the growing up of his son Jacob. Esau missed out on the uh, friendship of his brother Jacob. Jacob missed out on the friendship of his uh, brother Esau, the opportunity to grow up with his mom and his dad. Rebecca uh, suffered in that, as we said, she uh, never got to see her son again or any of her grandchildren by Jacob. 
the lessons we can learn from this is if you're a parent, by all means, treat your kids equally, love them equally. Never let one child think that uh, the other is favored over them. It will invariably create strife and it will cause a division in the family. Uh, if we get anything good out of chapters 25 through 28, it's in chapter 26, where God is going to bless Isaac. He's going to become very rich. A famine is going to happen in the land as in the days of Abraham. Uh, Isaac is going to waver a little bit and head for Egypt, but God will intercept him and stop him uh, at Beersheba, uh, and he will live among the Philistines at Gerard. In time, he will sow, and he will become stronger than they are. He will be asked to uh, leave. Um, the Philistines will, on the one hand, despise him or treat him poorly. Uh, he digs four wells, and uh, every time uh, until the fourth one, uh, the herdsmen of Gerard will take over the whales. Uh, in it, we see that Isaac, as we said earlier, is a type of Christ in the sense that he is a peacemaker. He refuses to fight. And when ultimately he be strong, becomes stronger than the Philistines, uh, the people of Gerard, the king of Abimelech will come to him with the captain of his army and make a peace treaty with Isaac, and Isaac will send them away in peace. Uh, the only um, positive in chapters 25, 26, 27, and 28. And uh, so uh, beginning in chapter 29, we'll spend some time in Syria with Jacob, and then ultimately 20 years later, uh, Jacob will come back. Uh, this is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word. Um, uh, let me simply say to you, if you want God's blessings, a uh, love uh, as God loves, refuse to let deceit be a part of your character, and uh, God will bless you for it. I go forth on this Saturday, bless someone, get ready for church tonight. I go out to church tomorrow and worship the Lord. And in the meantime, uh, bless somebody today. And uh, it'll bless them, bless you, and bless God. And God, in turn, will bless you as well. Have a blessed and wonderful Saturday.